Want to hear a hot take? Abercrombie has better branding than products. When I said that out loud, people got mad, mad. And that makes me so sad because you guys have been deceived by Abercrombie. Hey guys, it's Jen here, and today we're gonna review Abercrombie and Fitch. You guys already know the drill. We're gonna go into store, check out some items, see how it compares to the online ad. We're gonna check out the fabric, the construction, and the fit with some try-ons. Starting off with outerwear, we're gonna check out this trench coat. Looking at the online ad, it claims that this is the oversized trench coat, but the fit doesn't look that oversized to me. It looks pretty standard. Now looking at this trench coat in real life, the fabric is paper thin. The fabric is also very crinkly. It reminds me of a brown paper bag. The stitching on the coat is also much larger than it should be, and bigger stitches take less time to do, so it's cheaper to make. These buttons are comically small. They're the size of my thumb, and I have small hands. Now, trench coats are traditionally 100% cotton, but this one is mostly polyester. That's a bad sign. This belt should lay flat, but the fabric is so thin that it has no structure and the belt just collapses on itself. I'm trying on an extra large for that oversized fit, but you can't tell me that this looks good. It looks like I'm wearing a giant brown paper bag. And for $200, this is a hard pass. Next, we're checking out this wool blend funnel neck coat. The online ad looks pretty good. This coat looks pretty cozy. It's only $60 more than a trench coat, but the fabric is much thicker. But that's where the good things end, because look at the texture of this fabric. This is pilling just waiting to happen. And the buttons, again, comically small and does not make sense for the weight of this fabric. And what I mean by that is that thicker fabric needs bigger buttons to support the weight when it's buttoned closed. Otherwise, you're going to place so much pressure on these low buttons that they're eventually going to break or fall off. Looking at the belt of this jacket, the sewing is already coming apart. And surprise, surprise, is a mostly polyester jacket. This is not going to keep you warm. After looking at the composition, I'm not even surprised it's not flattering on. Synthetic blend coats usually have crinkles and wrinkles and they just don't drape very well. Moving on to the suiting, because so many people claim that Abercrombie is their go-to workwear store and I am confused. Because this has got to be one of the frumpiest blazers I have ever seen. Similar to that wool coat, you see how this blazer is kind of crinkly and old looking? I'm telling you right now, that is the cheapest possible lining fabric and those buttons are super cheap too. Of course, it's mostly polyester, there's no back vent, and there's no buttons on the cuff. And they have the audacity to charge $150. You can buy the same blazer at H&M for $30. And it wasn't just this one, oh no, it is all of them. They all look terrible. I didn't even bother to try it on because just no. Okay, moving on to the fitting room. I like how you can change the lights and the music in here. The first thing I tried on is this ripped short cardigan for $87. Not gonna lie, it's kinda cute, it's really soft, or maybe it's just the lighting in the fitting room. But stay with me now, just because it's soft doesn't mean it's good quality. If we look at it up close, you can already see little balls of fabric forming on top. This is pilling already starting to happen. And why is that happening? Because it's mostly synthetic, and for $87, this is a hard no. Let's give this one a try. This is the Crew Pearl Button Cardigan. The pearl buttons were kind of cute. I was kind of into it. But turns out this one is even worse than the last because it's mostly acrylic. And acrylic is one of the worst things you can buy for sweaters. Why? Because acrylic is designed to mimic cashmere. That means it's extremely soft. But after one or two washes, that sweater is going to harden up, stiffen up, and it's going to look super old. Can you tell I was kind of feeling myself in this changing room though? But that's how they get you. They design the lights in the fitting room to make you look so good so you buy their crappy clothes. All right, moving on to sweatshirts. I mean, you can't mess up a sweatshirt, right? So this one has a bit more cotton in it than polyester. But if you turn it inside out, you can tell this is the type of fabric that's gonna get crusty and musty no matter how much fabric softener you use. Something else that a lot of people rave about is their bodysuits. So let's try on this one. This thing is mostly a nylon with some elastane, 21% to be exact. This thing has so much compression, this is why I envision pro athletes will wear. I'll admit it does feel like it sucks you in, tucks that belly in, but it was also very hard to put on. This might be right up your alley if you like wearing shapewear on the outside, but for me it was a no. Moving on to bottoms, the infamous Sloan pants. I've got to say, these online ads make them look so good. I can see why they call them dupes for the ritzy effortless pants. But looking at them in real life, every single pair was so wrinkly. The sewing on the inside also was not very neat. You can see all these lines were not straight, they're all crooked. They didn't even bother to make the stitch on the belt loop centered. For a pair of wide-legged pants, the pockets were extremely shallow. They also added an elastic on the back, which doesn't look very good, but this is a design shortcut so that they don't have to make the fit perfect. They have all these loose strings hanging out. This looks horrendous. See, this is the messed up part. These pants are made from mostly polyester, but they added viscose, 
And the reason they added this is because they want the pants to feel softer. But viscose is super wrinkly and it's also pill prone. So why would you add a wrinkly pill prone fiber into dress pants? Makes no sense. Here's another Aritzia dupe, the vegan leather pants. I hate these with a passion because this vegan leather is just a melted sheet of plastic. And unless you like wearing clean wrap on your legs or you like to get fungal infections, don't buy these. But at least the soy on these were much better than the Sloan pants. I still wouldn't wish these on my worst enemy. Another fan favorite, their denim jeans. Specifically, their curb line. I was looking for a dark wash pair of jeans, so I decided to try these on. But why are there clumps of fabric on the inside? And again, the sewing is not straight. These jeans contain 1% of elastin, which I am not a fan of because what is 1% of elastin going to do for stretch? Plus, elastin denatures over time in the wash and in the dryer, and that's what's going to make your jeans look crumply. The pockets were again pretty shallow, and I tried on 27, which is my usual size, but it was a little bit big for me. So I sized down and I tried them in a different wash, and these fit much better. So if you're someone who loves their curved jeans, maybe this is worthwhile. Now we're getting a little fancy with the satin midi skirt. But I find the online ad a little bit deceiving because on the ad, it looks like the same fabric throughout. Whereas in real life, the top panel of fabric has that sheen, but the bottom part is more matte. You can also already see some snagging and texture issues on the fabric in store. And the texture issues are probably because it's viscose. Again, prone to pilling and prone to wrinkling. And when I tried it on, no matter what I did, I couldn't get that bunched up design to lay flat. So this to me was very unflattering. It's on sale for $52, but I don't even think it's worth that. And while I was picking things to try on, I saw this absolute crime of a dress. $112 for what? For a Forever 21 and West Seal collab? I did pick a few dresses to try on, so let me show you. This shirt dress at least makes sense for the brand. It aligns with that American teenager kind of vibe. But in real life, another letdown. The fabric was so extremely thin. The sewing on the inside, again, very messy. But at least this one is 100% cotton. When I tried it on, it didn't do what it was supposed to do. It didn't snatch in the waist. It made the back look very puffy. I just didn't feel like this was worth $100. I don't know why they love this bunched up fabric design so much because it is not flattering, but here we go again. For $160, you can get a wrinkly piece of fabric with a bulky zipper. Bulky zippers have no place on a delicate satin dress like this. This is just poor planning. And again with that signature polyester viscose mix that nobody likes. Lastly, this sweater dress. I was actually excited to put this on because it looked pretty good on the mannequin. And it looks good on the model too. But again, you can already see snagging on the fabric and texture issues. And let me tell you this was a mission to put on because there was not enough stretch in that neckline. There is absolutely no reason this dress does not have a zipper aside from the fact that it saves money when manufacturing it. The sewing on the sleeve is also not straight. There's nothing special about this dress. If you feel like it looks good on a model, it's because she has a model body. This dress does nothing for your body. It's only going to conform to the shape your body already is. Nylon viscose blend. The viscose is there to soften the feel of the nylon. Otherwise, this is nothing special. And that's it for this week's review. Let me know in the comments which brand I should review next. See you next time. Bye!